Forget everything you have been taught about human evolution, because in a recent peer-reviewed paper, scientists suggest that a multidirectional, shuttle dispersal model, is more likely to explain the complex phylogenetic connections among ancient African and Eurasian human species and populations. In point of fact, there are ancient skulls from Africa that strikingly resemble a skull from China that has even been suggested to be a Denisovan. Is it possible that Asian hominids migrated back to Africa? This model may seem against the one-way model of human evolution that we have been taught, but there is no logical reason to dismiss a multidirectional model of human dispersal. According to the paper, biogeographical stochastic mapping indicates that the directionality of the dispersals between Africa, Asia, and Europe is asymmetric. Africa is the major source of homo dispersals, and Asia is a sink of hominin species and populations that receives more dispersals from Africa and Europe than it gives dispersals to Africa and Europe. In total, Asia receives 42% of the total dispersal events and only provides 24% dispersals to other continents. In total, 40% of all the dispersals are from Africa, while Africa also receives 22% dispersals from Asia and Europe. Instead of a unidirectional, out-of-Africa, model, a multidirectional, shuttle dispersal model, is more likely to explain the complex phylogenetic connections among African and Eurasian homo species and populations. Sympatric diversification and founder event dispersal are the most dominant biogeographical modes reflecting the fact that multi-lineages of humans coexisted in Africa, Europe, and Asia during the Middle and Late Pleistocene. These lineages probably had a strong capability of dispersing for long distances, but remained in relatively small and isolated populations, according to the paper. Despite what English naturalist Charles Darwin had hypothesized in his 1871 book Descent of Man, many late 19th-century evolutionary naturalists postulated that Asia, not Africa, was the birthplace of humankind as it is midway between Europe and America, providing optimal dispersal routes throughout the world. In the heart of Africa, in what is now known as Zambia, lies a story that spans hundreds of thousands of years, the tale of the Carbway Cranium, also referred to as the Broken Hill Skull or Rhodesian Man. This ancient relic, discovered in 1921 near the town of Carbway in southern Africa, offers us a window into the life of a remarkable individual who inhabited the region tens of thousands of years ago. The Carbway Cranium, estimated to be 150,000 to 300,000 years old, represents an early human from the Middle Pleistocene era. This fossilized skull, belonging to an unknown species, provides insight into the lives of our distant relatives and the environment they navigated. The individual to whom the Carbway cranium belonged was a robust and adaptable hominin species. With a prominent brow ridge and a large brain case, the Carbway individual possessed physical characteristics that distinguished them from earlier human ancestors, and foreshadowed the emergence of our own species, Homo sapiens. During this era, the region surrounding Carbway boasted a diverse landscape. It was a time when grasslands expanded across the African continent, interspersed with woodlands and scattered water sources. This mosaic of environments provided abundant resources for the inhabitants of the land, shaping their daily lives and survival strategies. The Kabwe people likely consisted of skilled hunter-gatherers who relied on their strength, intelligence, and social cohesion to thrive. They honed their hunting skills, tracking and capturing a variety of game, ranging from large ungulates to smaller animals. The presence of stone tools in the region suggests that the Carbway individuals were adept at crafting instruments for hunting, and processing food. The Carbway cranium, with its distinctive features, represents a critical chapter in the story of human evolution. It serves as a testament to the diversity of human ancestors that once roamed the African continent. As archaic hominins gave way to other hominin species, including our own Homo sapiens, the legacy of the Carbway individual persisted as a piece of our ancestral puzzle. While the specific details of the Carbway individual's life remain shrouded in the mists of time, their existence provides a link to our shared human heritage. The Carbway cranium is a tangible reminder of the resilience, adaptability, and intellectual capacity of our early ancestors as they confronted the challenges of their environment. The cranial capacity of the Broken Hill skull has been estimated at 1,230 cubic centimeters. While the cranial volume overlaps with the range of Homo sapiens, other features such as the brain case morphology and prominent brow ridges are suggestive of older species. 
the skull suggests an extremely robust individual with the comparatively largest brow ridges of any known hominin. Indeed, Carbway may be the largest superorbital torus in the Pleistocene record. The superorbital torus, or brow ridge, is a very distinctive morphological trait in most of our hominin ancestors. But what purpose does this feature serve? One of the hypotheses around this topic is a signaling effect, accentuating aggressive stares, thus its large size could have been sexually selected through generations. This skull also bears remarkable similarities to the earlier Bodo skull and the later Herto skull of Ethiopia. However, Carbway has a much larger brow ridge than the minimum required to fulfill spatial demands, and its size has little impact on mechanical performance during biting. In fact, many huge superorbital tori are hollowed inside with large sinuses, suggesting that they did not bear or transmit physical forces from blows to the head or heavy chewing. Surprisingly, the Carbway and Bodo skulls also has many similarities with the Chinese Harbin cranium, including a thick superorbital torus, large brain case, and a broad nasal aperture. Despite the geographic distance between the two specimens, the similarities between the two ancient craniums is, however, obvious and apparent. In the northern reaches of China, nestled within a northeastern province, lies a tale spanning thousands of years, the story of the Harbin cranium, also known as Homo longi. This extraordinary discovery illuminates the life of a unique hominin, offering us a glimpse into a distant epoch of human history. Just like the Carbway cranium, the Harbin cranium is characterized by a low and long skull, receding forehead, extremely wide upper face, a large nasal opening, equating to an enlarged nose, an adaptation to the cold air, large and square eye sockets, inflated and thick brow ridges, flat cheekbones, a wide palate and large tooth sockets, equating to a large mouth and a broad base of the skull. The Harbin cranium, discovered in 1933 is a fossilized skull fragment that once belonged to an individual, who lived approximately 146,000 years ago. Belonging to a previously unknown species called Homo longi, meaning, dragon man, in reference to the region's folklore, this ancient hominin provides a fascinating narrative of their life and the environment they inhabited. The dragon man possessed a formidable physical presence, with a robust skull indicating strong cranial features. This allowed for a large brain capacity of 1,420 cubic centimeters, suggesting advanced cognitive abilities and potential intellectual prowess. These characteristics, combined with a sturdy frame, point to a physically adept and adaptable individual. Living during a time known as the Middle Pleistocene, the Harbin cranium human thrived in a region of China marked by diverse landscapes. The area around Harbin, once covered by dense forests, boasted an abundance of resources and opportunities for survival. Rivers and lakes teemed with fish, while vast grasslands attracted herds of grazing animals, providing sustenance for the dragon man and their community. The Harbin humans were hunter-gatherers, relying on their resourcefulness and cooperation to secure food. They roamed the grassy plains, honing their hunting skills and employing strategies to capture the wildlife that populated the region. Their robust physique and sharp intellect enabled them to pursue large game, utilizing rudimentary but effective hunting tools crafted from stone and bone. The Harbin cranium, with its distinct features, attests to the uniqueness of the previously unknown species that existed alongside other hominins of the time, such as Homo neanderthalensis and archaic Homo sapiens. This coexistence suggests a complex interplay of cultures, interactions, and perhaps even occasional conflict among different hominin groups in the region. Due to the Pleistocene glaciation, aka the Ice Ages, the Earth continually swung from frigid glacial periods to warmer interglacials. The period from 300 to 130,000 years ago spans the penultimate glacial period, and the permafrost zone may have stretched south far into China. The northerly location of the Harbin site also has implications for Middle Pleistocene human adaptive capabilities, since, even in the present interglacial, this region has winter temperatures averaging more than 16 degrees Celsius below zero. The very large size of the Harbin individual, as judged from the size of the cranium, may indicate physical adaptation to such conditions. Similarly, the northeast China plain during the late Middle Pleistocene was home to an assemblage of animals adapted for a cold steppe most notably the woolly mammoth and the woolly rhinoceros. In addition to the woolly mammoth, the locality also featured extinct species of giant deer, horse, elk, buffalo, and the brown bear. 
the coexistence of several human lineages during the late Middle and late Pleistocene of Asia is probably related to its diverse paleo environments, ranging from the Gobi Desert to rainforest, and from coastal plains to the Tibet Plateau, which produced a varied biogeographic sink for human evolution. Regrettably, despite the rich insights into the life of these individuals, much of their story remains shrouded in mystery. The fragmentary nature of the fossils limits our understanding of their physical appearance and specific cultural practices. Yet, their existence provides an invaluable piece of the human evolutionary puzzle, illuminating a distinct branch of our ancestral tree. Like the Harbing cranium, the 600,000-year-old Bodo specimen from Ethiopia also has an unusually large cranial capacity for its age, that is estimated at around 1,250 cubic centimeters, within the range of Carbway and Harbin. The front of the Bodo cranium is very broad and supports large, heavily constructed superorbital structures. The cranium has an unusual appearance, which has led to debates over its taxonomy. These features have led some scientists to the conclusion that the Harbin and Carbway skulls represents a transitional phase, between the earlier Homo erectus and modern humans. As of the publication of this video, no attempts to extract DNA or sequence a genome from the Carbway or Harbin skulls have been successful. The story of the Harbin, Carbway and Bodo craniums reminds us of the vast diversity of our ancient human lineage and the complex tapestry of human history. It highlights the tenacity of our ancestors as they navigated the challenges of their environment, adapted to changing landscapes, and forged cultural bonds within their communities. Indeed, as our understanding of the human evolution continues to unfold through ongoing research and discoveries, we anticipate that the story will captivate our imagination unraveling further mysteries and shedding light on the fascinating journey of human evolution. As we continue to unearth new discoveries and deepen our understanding of the ancient past, we are reminded of the vast journey that has led to our present-day human experience. The story of these skulls serves as a testament to our enduring quest to uncover our origins and unravel the mysteries of our evolutionary past. Please check out all our other videos on human evolution and continue to explore the mysteries of our shared past. Until then, remember to embrace the uniqueness of our shared human heritage. Thank you for watching.